okay so again a lot of cars they have power and you know and nowadays technology is so good like every car is pretty fast every car kind right. of handles pretty well mm -hmm. but dang this you know the sound from the back is so good Panthers back there. How is it that fast? <laughs> it's true. The, the the Porsche horsepower is a lie. That's not 400. No. Like how? I asked the same question, man. Uh... All right, everyone. Welcome back to Automotive Miami, man, James. Thank you, thank you for making the time for us, man. I'm, I'm gonna cry because I, I don't, I'm gonna have to drive my Honda on the way back home after this, but <laughs> thank you for making the time for us, man. What do you drive? Uh, I drive a 2010 Porsche 911 GT3 over here. Whew. Wow, before we get into this beautiful, beautiful build, man, I've just been drooling all over it. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, when do you remember thinking, I like cars, this is my hobby? Um, man, ever since I can remember as a little boy with little Hot Wheels, I have a two-year-old son right now and he's all about the Hot Wheels and it just transports me back in time. Uh, I remember annoying my parents trying to call out all the taillights, oh, you know, when, I, when we were driving yeah. in the back seat and stuff and they're always like, shut up. And, <laughs> but I think, I think cars and, and things mechanical mm -hmm. have always interested me ever since I was a little kid. So um, that, that stuck with me forever. And mm -hmm. I think up until I was, you know, had friends that had cars, it, I think that's when it really started to kick off. Gotcha. Yeah. So when do you actually start noticing specific cars that you're like, okay, I, I want to drive cars? What age was that? Um, right around, I think right around ninth grade, probably mm -hmm. 10th grade, or like 14, 15 years old. Got some of the older friends that got cars. Mm -hmm. They got older brothers who, you know, would do a little fixing up things and exhaust and here and there. And it was the coolest thing because maybe, maybe some of you or I don't know, for you, you might remember when we used to like put little baseball cards in our bicycle like yes. spokes to make yes. noises and stuff. Yes. It was always that modifying, putting on pegs, taking off the pads and taking man. off the reflectors just to make it look yep. slightly different. Yep. And that was the culture, man. And and uh, I think that part of it with skateboarding culture, all that kind of stuff growing up, it all kind of like points to cars for me. You know what I mean? That's funny you mentioned that because I also did the same thing, but I never put it, I hadn't heard anybody mention any of that stuff that we did to the bikes. I thought it was just a, you know, very few people did it. Right on. Okay, that's awesome, man. What becomes your first car? My first car was a hand-me-down car, uh, probably the best kind, right? Um, a 1992 Honda Accord four-door, automatic, uh, LX, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Important, because that's the lowest trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, got the 14-inch hubcaps and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that was, that was the car where I think I learned how to, how simple it was to actually unbolt something and just bolt something right back on. You know, I always thought cars were these like super complex, complicated engineering things, which, you know, a lot of time they are, but they're also very simple too, you know, simple to work on. It says the German owner. I know, are right? Are you kidding? Like, I know. You chose like the worst <laughs> car to describe, simple. These dudes go above and beyond to make it complicated. We'll put a, we'll put a, a, a 92 Honda Accord like <laughs> Photoshop right here real quick. <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, it sounds like you started with an exotic and you've been downgrading to <laughs> this car, whatever. What is it, a Beetle? All right, man. So when does the Porsche bug start for you? I think the Porsche bug probably bit, it was weird. Um, I never dreamt that I could own a car like this. That Welcome was, that to was the a, club. <laughs> you know, and, and it, and one thing that I've learned in life is that, you know, if you really want something, put a plan together. And mm -hmm. a lot of time you're like halfway there already just with the plan. And I think meeting other people with that same mindset with people that are into cars, it, it was, it was like a, you know, kind of like a good fusion. Happen. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Yeah. How do we sum up on this one? When how did you did find out how long you had it this for? One. Um, so a buddy of mine that I race with um, in the Beamer Challenge series, he's a, he's a big BMW guy and a big Porsche guy. Mm -hmm. And he's had actually owned this, he, he was a previous owner of this car. And he used to drive it all the time, um, cruise around in it. And I always remember just saying, man, damn, yep. one day that'd be nice. Yep. One day that'd be nice. One day we're just chilling out and I kind of just, said it in like a joking way I'm like man 
would be really nice to have this car one day. And he's like, hey man, let's talk, you know, let's, let's actually talk. So it slowly just kind of morphed into that. Wow. And um, crunching some numbers, uh, trying to save some money, you know what I mean? Man. It wasn't like it was just right there, but you know, did a little hard work to get it there. Oh, that's amazing, man. And how long ago was this, you said? 2019. So if Funny. any of y'all remember, um, right before the pandemic, car prices were pretty normal. Mm -hmm. um, and then they got crazy. So Especially for Porsche. <laughs> yeah, Porsche yeah. was times two crazy. Yeah, man, it was, I was like, what the hell's going on? So uh, it felt like a good time, you know? Yeah. I, you told the wife, I told you it was an investment. <laughs> that is a true story. I, I was like, hey, babe, uh, you know, it's a GT car. It's a rare spec and blah, blah, blah. And she's sure, like, buddy. she's like, sure. <laughs> I'll entertain your whole pitch, you know what I mean? But she was cool about it. That's cool, yeah. man. <laughs> this is beautiful. What do I not like? Oh, the only thing that I could say that I don't like about the car is that it's just, um, you know, it's a 2010. You know, there's no smartphones then. So, like, some of the connectivity and things, mm -hmm. it's a very minute, you know, pet peeve, but that's all. Okay. You know. What clutch are you running? It is a uh, stock clutch. Stock clutch. Um, I think it has, a, if I remember correctly, I believe uh, the previous owner put in a, uh, a light and flywheel. Uh -huh. with, uh, a Porsche light and flywheel. I think from like a, maybe an RS or something like that. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, you're right about that whole, like the, the stiffness of it. Mm -hmm. And it's so direct and, and notchy. Yeah. That's, that's fun. Man. And it's like super short throw, you know, the reverse is way over. And you can try to feel it, it's like, uh, you gotta really push it in. I'm assuming this car is not going anywhere anytime soon. That's true. Part of the family now. I love it, man. Well, let's talk about it. Um, the car, what color is it? Uh, it's a white. Um, I don't even know the, the pure spec of the white color, but it's just the, the white GT car. Um, so clean. And uh, yeah, shoot. It's a, it's a 992. Um, it's been, there's a couple of modifications that have been done to it. A lot of suspension work. Uh, so it has a full overhaul of JRZ uh, three ways. Uh, a full BBI arm kit, front and rear. Ooh. Um, it's got the steel brakes, uh, upgraded pads and lines, um, the E88s, and that, that's pretty much major on the, on the handling side. But tell us about the wheel and tire setup, because those E88s, they go so well with uh, Mercedes, uh, Beamers and Porsches, man. It's beautiful. What are the specs on those? So the specs are this is a so this is a, a narrow body it's a gt3 it's a narrow body so the gt3 rs is the wide body what the wide body in the, in the for the gt3 rs is about an inch wider on each side gotcha so i'm actually running 
uh, GT3 RS spec rear and front wheel setup. Mm. Normally the GT3s don't run it because it's a little bit narrower, there's mm -hmm. a little bit of rubbing issues, but was able to work it out. And I really love kind of like a really aggressive fitment on wheels. All my cars are kind of like that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I'm a BMW background guy. The there's a there's a group called the Shermer Racing Group. Uh, they have a Shermer E92 M3 that just rocks gold EV8s on a black car. And ever since I That's saw Nurburgring, right? Yes. Oh, yes. I love that. I love that car. I mm. fell in love with that wheel, man. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. So it's like a like a motorsport classic BBS looking style. Love the mesh, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And so, do you know the specs on them? Uh, it's a 19 by nine. A I front. believe in the front and a 19 by 12 in the rear. 12? I think, oh my yeah. Goodness. It's a 325 tire and a 245 tire. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it just tucks so nicely. Like, you know, yeah, they, they just, well, you need it. You need it for the power back there. Yeah. Okay. That's just gorgeous, man. And then uh, the, the car itself, um, what has been modified for those that, of us that don't know, is it stock uh, bumper? I know it's a GT3, so it comes with a lot of different little things that any Carrera or, you know. Right, well, we'll start from the front. So, I mean, the the bumper is a stock GT3 bumper. It has a GT3 cup front lip. Okay. The great thing about Porsche that I, it was um, totally took me by surprise is this front lip is really cheap. What's and it's just cheap? A like thousand 300 bucks. bucks. <laughs> 300 What's cheap for you? Because cheap for you and cheap for me is different. It's only $3,000. It was a bargain. This is a $300 lip and it bolts in and out in about five minutes. It's such a great design. The dude. fitment looks very good and it looks like it lasts. So it can take some, mm -hmm. some hits. And it's it's meant to be a disposable. Like, you know, it's it's meant to... Don't break it now. Don't break it yeah, now. I know, right? I know, I know it's only, only $300. Come down, but don't break it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got... Um, some uh, 4.0 canards oh. and then the um the gt3 rs arches those are just add-ons to the side oh i like that i like that yeah um and you come over to the back i went ahead and 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 tried out a different rear wing setup so this is like the rs setup okay. versus the the attached kind of like lower profile gt3 right, wing right. um and this is made out by um um Shoot, what was that company? It, well, they make composites for GMG. Okay. Because okay, it's basically a GMG trunk. Um, this is a uh, different risers, so mm -hmm. they're actually taller mm -hmm. than the normal ones. Man, okay. So now the is it like a lid and wing co uh, combo? Yes. Okay, so it's actually it all three pieces. This all part, three, okay. this part, and the wing. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah it works so nicely. It tucks in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. And so one of the cool things, let me if I can. is that this new, the new deck lid or back here has like bigger air scoops. Mm -hmm. So then it allows for the uh, the 4.0 or the GT3 RS intake. So that was also upgraded also. Oh man. Oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Man. Okay, so I'll definitely a lot of different changes. You can't just change something and not actually make it functional because obviously with these cars, you know, they, they think everything in mind. And so this one doesn't have a little vent on the side. So you need to make sure that you put some air uh, right. back here. Right. Since we're back here, man, and usually, you know, the people we interview, their, their engines are in the front. <laughs> but we're here. Um, tell us about what is the engine, what is it, what are we looking at? This is a 3.8 Metzger motor. Um, it's the last Metzger motor that they produced for a GT Porsche. Mm -hmm. um, it is, um, super tucked back down there it's probably making around i would say 435 to 450 brake horsepower um it just has an intake a shark works center section exhaust and that's all it really needs you know it's it's a <laughs> it's a pretty it still has a lot of juice in it you know it's a pretty quick car still so now you mentioned this is the last of its type of motor by that company yeah what's so good about that so Metzger was a motor designer um, that built GT cars specifically, I believe, for like the Porsche Le Mans racing mm. where, you know, they would run to the car and jump yep, in. Yep, That's yep. why the ignition's on the left side mm -hmm. versus the right side uh, for these little, little motorsport <clears throat> things, which I think is what Porsche is really special about. Um, so that motor is the last time it came out in this car. All the newer GT cars have a similar platform, but it's not a true Metzger. Gotcha. Um, and it has a very panther-like growling idol. And that's what's a, that's what, how you can tell it's a Metzger. Wow. So you have 
have to put the little lever up, so there's no way you can accidentally right. put it into the reverse. Yeah, there's a lockout for the reverse. And um, I don't know, it, it becomes a it's, it's a, it's definitely a non valet driver friendly shifter. <laughs> I mean, will you really let any valet driver, you know, to begin with? Like, no, you, I park it myself. I'll still tip you, but I'm gonna park it myself. <laughs> oh man, man, thank you so much for this experience. It's just amazing. Oh, it's, it's no other a, better way to pleasure. to spend my morning, you know? Yeah. It's so cool, man. Good right. hanging out with good people, hanging around with cars. You know, definitely very motivating, man. Because it's like it, it gives me a sense of like, man, like. It's doable, like you mentioned. You have to set yourself around people that think positive and that work a plan, work a yeah. plan. And so, it's weird. Like when I was younger and I was hanging around, you know, the the some of the older kids mm -hmm. that had cars, right? It's it's funny because you know there's that saying like if you hang around five people that do something, you're gonna be the sixth one. Yeah. And it's so true with like you know with like school or. Mm -hmm job or you know cars and friends too you know check out the interior man see what we got going on all right Woo! i mean there's something about porsches in the interior it's just so perfect man and ah, this is it what do you got going on man um the biggest noticeable thing are going to be the pepita recaros uh so those are a new addition um kind of like that old school pattern look on the on the seats mm -hmm. uh, you can see the caa shifter in the middle um a sparko steering wheel and as well as the pedals are from renline um porsche pedals have have a tendency especially in the 997 where the where the accelerator pedal is really low is a lot lower than the brake so mm. kind of doing heel toe mm. it takes a little bit of adjustment so those pedals are adjustable in height which makes it a lot better and they also have the extension right yes oh that's awesome okay wow <laughs> and other than that, it's a pretty, oh, there's a, uh, a GMG roll bar in the back. <laughs> She's a big old roll bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you can see the, uh, the GRZ is attached to it as well. Oh, that's so cool. Man. This car is just perfect. Wow. I mean, I, I hate to ask, but is there anything planned for the interior? What's that? Oh, plans? <laughs> um, man, right now? not that much i i go back and forth with trying to do something with audio but for some reason i don't want to modify this i don't want to take it out of this time era too much audio what do you mean you just choose exhaust that's your audio <laughs> i know right? what are you doing no 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 got trumpets out the back oh, yeah oh man this is so rad and then the front if you don't mind showing as a front sure <clears throat> see what we got going on so the best function of this car in the front is that we got we got a little storage space for some more suspension <laughs> canisters that's about it some people put groceries you put suspension <laughs> reservoirs so clean man so um like uh there's a shop called jmp that does a lot of the work on my cars and and they did a fantastic job installing like the setup super clean running the lines through the uh for the canisters the reservoirs that's so cool Damn. Oh, just, I mean, there's no space, but uh -huh. you don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> You're driving it. You're not going to the grocery stores with this. <laughs> and there's no space back there. You don't need it. You're maybe one or two per, you know, people in the car. So it's a, yeah, it's a minimalist car. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing your part in the world, you know, consuming less. I appreciate yes, you. You know, everyone's <laughs> got to do their part. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody should buy a Porsche, that's what you're saying. <laughs> now, this is an interesting question for me to ask you because this is this is not a cheap car. This is not a... Something breaks in this car is going to you know uh -huh. cost you. Is is there a possibility that you would track this car? I have tracked this car before. You have? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. it, it, you know, wasn't pushing it too crazy. It was one of those uh, kind of a private track days where mm -hmm. there's less people and gotcha. things like that. Uh, but, I mean, to be honest, it's like... It's like you're gonna play basketball in, in basketball shoes, you know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> this car belongs on that track. It really comes alive, and you actually feel the engineering way more yeah. on a racetrack than you do on a street. Right, yeah. right, right. Gotcha. As long as, uh, yeah, you know, safe, safe environment, aware driver, mm -hmm. um, you know, good conduct around the racetrack, it's a pretty safe environment, you know? Yeah. And Porsche is known for reliability, right? I mean, most cars that in my opinion it's 
the reliability comes from the maintenance and how you how you really you gotcha. know take care of things there's things that are suggested to get replaced but people never do sometimes and that ends up you know biting them in the butt mm -hmm. later um so it's it's kind of interesting porsche takes a different approach with some of their parts so you know with some cars you replace something when it's bad okay like you see a tear in a rubber bushing or something a lot of porsche parts especially their cup cars have a date stamp where you have to replace no. parts by a certain date yeah, yeah yeah control arms have a date stamp on it bushings have a date stamp on it so it's kind of like one of those things whoa yeah wow i didn't know that james thank you so much man for making the time thank you so much for showing guys your beautiful beautiful car dude such a killer car I, I absolutely love it um it's amazing that porsches you know they make a great quality car and then you have amazing enthusiasts like yourself who upgrade and somehow make it better so that's super cool man thank you for the time any shout outs thank you well thank you for you uh thanks to you for having me on here it's super awesome to hang out and just be a part of the culture um uh, man shout outs there's so many so many people to thank and kind of uh show appreciation to every, down to the friends to the to the companions at the racetrack. Um, what I really love about this car community is, is um, you know, everyone is an enthusiast. Uh, not everyone comes from the same background, but there's a connection that, you know, kind of bonds us all together, which I think is super awesome and it's kind of needed nowadays. Um, and I see people helping each other out. It's really, really awesome. Um, and so I think that's something that I just want to mention as a shout out to everybody in the car culture. Hey, let's keep that going, you know, that's such a nice pay it forward type of mentality um and yeah i guess i guess official shout outs you know jarek thanks at jmp for all the all the help simon at ren spec pretty much every part that's on this car i, I get from my buddy simon uh, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a good friend <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know he's the he's a local guy right um and uh, you know my buddies jason john uh all the guys at beamer challenge um man yeah so that's awesome, man. Shout out to Peter for uh, connecting us. Yeah, Peter, because he's a good he, guy. Yeah, he, yeah, he was uh, sure. the middle person between us. And the, uh, man, it's like, I have a cool friend with the cool cars. I was like, okay, who? <laughs> and then he showed me the cars. Like, okay, yeah, ask him for me, please. So thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Peter, man. I definitely appreciate it. I love what uh, you guys are doing as a, as a car culture and specifically more on the track end of things. And so, man. Can't wait to see what this this car holds for you. Uh, Thank and, you. And yeah, stay in the family forever, man. And I'll be joining you soon. You know, with the right Porsche. On. When I don't know, but I'll be definitely joining you. I uh, will be doing those cruises, man, for sure. There going, you go. Going up the crest. There you go. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Thank you for your time. Thanks, man. Does it feel like it still wants to kick a little bit? It does. Yeah, and especially because the the car is rear weight biased. It's a different handling experience than like a you know like a regular rear wheel drive car with, a, with kind of like a 50-50 weight balance. Yeah. There's a, I can feel the front of the car lift quite a bit because you know, wow. the, the engine in the rear just kind of pendulums. It's just so much lighter in the front. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So there's a lot of steering through the gas pedal. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can make it right here. That'll take us back to the coffee shop. Yeah. Wait, so they're steering through the gas pedal? <laughs> in a sense First where, time I've ever heard yeah. that. <laughs> In a sense where when man, you push these are really different man just coming up with all these fake things <laughs> i know i'm just making everything yeah. the I'm ages gonna, in the front not even in the back i'm gonna, get a, I'm gonna get a phone call from porsche they're like what the hell, what the hell are you saying man <laughs> who are you that's funny